Welcome everyone to episode 542 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentelaresco. I write stuff, I podcast, sometimes I illustrate, I just dabble. And my guest is kind of another dabbler. So I have to make a confession here, ladies and gentlemen. My I knew Alice here as a streamer. So when I was like, <laughs> so when I was doing this idea for streamer week, it's like I asked her, Would you like to come on my show? And then she shows me everything else she's doing. It's like Holy guys, holy shit, she, she's really good. She's just she's really, really good. I don't know what she's doing here, to be honest. But before we, we, we begin, so I was very tempted to put in like Alice the author or K H A R A R T S because that's that's your that's your Twitch handle. So what are you most comfortable like? Just Alice or like like what's like? How do you see yourself? I think mean, that's a great first question, actually. Great yeah. That, that is a pretty loaded question for me because um, there are a few different titles that I go by. And I found that the simplest one for everybody across the board is just to call me Alice. Short, simple, sweet, um, you know, ties across the board. Uh, but yes, uh, Little Alice or Alice Liddell are um, my biggest names that I go by as both an author and as a model and as a performer. Um, KHR Arts is um, a shorthand that I use for my work as an artist, and it actually stands for Catherine Howard Rose, which was my favorite of King Henry VIII's wives. Um, and uh, yeah, and then my legal name is actually uh, Lauren A.R. Masterson. So it's it gets a little bit confusing, and everybody just calls me Alice just to make it easy. So there you go. That, so I'm gonna ask this then: Is that like, do you see yourself as Alice? Like how, like, like how do you see you? Because I, I think that's a, I only maybe that's an equally loaded question, but you have a lot of different professional hats you wear. Yeah. Like, and so it's like, okay, who am I? Like today, it's like that, that, that must happen sometimes. Um. So yeah, I am. Uh, Basically, I'm always Alice. Uh, I've got my my Alice in Wonderland silver sark dress on today in honor of that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always seen myself as Alice uh, really for as long as I can remember. Um, and it was only until I was like an adult that I really realized that like, you know, the whole you can like rename yourself, you can be whoever you want to be sort of thing. Um, and, you know, I started that with my modeling career with kind of like renaming myself and really like crafting my identity and stuff. But yeah, I really do see myself as Alice just because I've always really um, been fascinated by Lewis Carroll's works. Um, I actually own an extensive collection of um, not just Alice in Wonderland books, but his uh, other works as well. And I actually have two very rare World War II uh, propaganda copies of Alice in Wonderland. Nice. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I, do, do you mind if I show you? I'll show you what I've been using to research. Like we were talking about my little series off the air. I can't say all the good stuff I, I talked to her about, unfortunately, just yet. But so When I'm researching it, it's the oh, annotated. Beautiful. Yeah. So the cool thing about the on the inside is not just the let's see if you can see it, not mm -hmm. just the story, but there's all the notes about all the different pop culture references, like themes he commonly threw in his commonly threw in his stuff. Like but I think one of the cool things I did not realize about Carol, he essentially created 42. I did not yeah. know that. I did not know that until I was <laughs> like, he's the man. He's truly the man behind 42. It's not Douglas Adams, although like it's so and then you look at the computer key, like like even computer programs have used it in various forms and others. It's like it comes from Carol. Douglas Adams took it and made it his own, right? But yeah, it's Carol Adams and now and, and it literally it means anything. It's an old computer yeah. code that means anything. And and it's funny because because one of his other major themes I noticed in there is the concept of nobody, right? Mm -hmm. Who does he yeah. kill? Nobody. But if you look at it, nobody's <laughs> an actual character in his stories. Right. It's not, like it's not like there is actually an agency in nobody. And I was really, really and I again for not spoiling too much in my own series, right? My heart is saying, okay, so who in the Greek mythos would actually be nobody? Because that's that 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 was like, okay, how do I match that up in into Greek? And I'm like, 
figure it out. I'll figure it out. But yeah, no, he's he is a very very um, he's a fascinating historic like like from a, from an author standpoint, he's he's a very fascinating figure. The story that was supposed to be for children is is been one of it's probably one of the most analyzed books out there actually. If you're yeah. Like about it, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I've drawn a lot of inspiration from his works. Um, across the board for all of my creative pursuits, not just writing, but also my art and my modeling and my performances, just everything. So it, you know, basically everything that I do, it all boils down to, you know, Alice. So yeah, it's, it's a big part of who I am. It's a big part of my life and my work. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which is, which is cool. I'm not like, there's no, there's no knock to that at all. I mean, look, we all, we all take our inspirations from wherever we take them from. Right. So what was it about Alice for you? I'm just very curious, like Alice in the morning, like what's the appeal to you? Um, so when I, you know, when I was little, of course, um, I watched tons and tons of Disney movies. Um, my nanny bought me like basically every single Disney VHS on the planet. Um, and even though like my favorite Disney movie is, uh, the little mermaid, like I wore out several VHS tapes of the little mermaid when I was a child, <laughs> but, um, but I don't know. I just always felt this connection with Alice as a character. Um, and just how like the world around her was so chaotic and like, she kept trying to be like, I'm on this mission and nobody would listen to her. You know, everybody was interrupting her with their own shit. Everybody had, you know, their own ideas of what they thought she needed to do or where she, you know, needed to go and stuff. And it just ended up getting her more and more lost. And she like lost more of herself along the way until she finally got to the end where she's like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Like the caterpillar is like, who are you? And she's like, I actually don't know anymore. I knew when I woke up and I don't know anymore. And as I progressed, you know, into, you know, uh, preteen and teenager and stuff like that, I felt very much like that where, you know, it was like, you know, who are you? I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. I used to know who I was and now I don't. Um, cause I went through a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of major life changes growing up very quickly. Um, I had a lot of deaths in the family, um, from a very young age. So that impacted me heavily. And then I actually suffered from some really severe bullying in junior high to the point where I actually went through psychosis. Like I, nobody was home. Like it was scary stuff. Um, so by the time I got to high school, like my personality and my identity were so fragmented that I just started kind of glomming on to like other people and just kind of absorbing like pieces of their personalities to try to glue myself into being a human being again. And if you like ask me like, who are you? It's like, I don't know anymore. And so, you know, I just really always have connected with that of how, you know, she got so lost because everybody else was, you know, telling her what to do and where to go. And everybody was interrupting her and everybody was, you know, shoving her along this path and, you know, inflicting all this crazy nonsense on her and stuff. And it wasn't until the end when she started to have, you know, to take autonomy for herself again with, you know, I give myself very good advice that she finally started to be able to find her way again and, you know, find her way out of Wonderland. And the same with, you know, look through the looking glass, you know, again, it wasn't until she started taking some autonomy for herself that she was able to escape the nonsense. And that, you know, that's kind of how my life has been too, is that like, you know, I will lose myself if I don't take autonomy and, you know, basically push my way through the nonsense. So that's always been a, you know, a huge part of who I am. No, it, it's, I think it's a really um, honest, like, ownership, too. Like, I, uh, first off, sorry about everything you kind of went through. That that sounds like, that, that, you're thankful for some of the obstacles you go through afterwards, because it makes you who you are. Same time, you kind of wish you never had to go through it to begin with, because sometimes you go to yourself, there had to have been an easier way to get here. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the thing, right? Like, like. I'm grateful for every hardship I've ever been through in my life, honestly. But at the same time, sometimes you go looking back, you're like, you know, this could have been a lot easier. Now, some of it's not. Now, in my in my case, some of it's completely on me, right? It's like, you know, I was stupid. That I can, <laughs> own, I can own that. But some of it's like, you know, I, I didn't have to go. It didn't have to be that hard. It didn't have to be that um, um, 
it didn't have to be this way. And I think I think all of us can kind of relate to that. My fascination with Alice, the more I read about her, is is uh, depending on what interpretation you have of her, right? She she secret like this is like this is secretly her world. Whether you realize it or not, I mean that's the thing I love about Alice in Wonderland is is this is this is very much her world, her place, her time, and it's not like. And the thing about that is because she's never like in, at least in Alice in Wonderland. Although they, they, it's crazy and she's getting interrupted and she's getting pushed along a certain path, she never actually feels like she's in any danger. She actually sometimes will just go in there and she'll completely create chaos around her. And I thought it's interesting. Like she, she's oddly, although she finds herself in all kinds of trouble, she's almost got like this magical protection on her, but nothing directly harms her. And I thought that was an interesting. That's an interesting weird combination of chaos and innocence in one package right so yeah that yeah so i and i think that's a really interesting thing and and i kind of look at like i like again looking at what i've done with like alice's pandora and my wonderland saga i look at their their similarities they both committed the crime of curiosity alice is a very curious character yes so pandora, <laughs> right and, and so is pandora but they're curious in different ways pandora but in ways we both understand like pandora want to know what was in the box i mean come on we also we all have <laughs> what's in the box you can take this or you can take the box the box the box the box even though there's nothing <laughs> in there right yeah you no know, you know right because that's human nature right and, and, um the difference is it's a much harsher punishment for pandora than it was to actually punish um Al alice went through we had to go through chaos to get out but there was an easier way out for Alice than there was for Pandora. And I, I, I almost feel like it's almost like the evolution of the story. I mean, maybe the, right, it's not quite the same story, but it's so close. Uh, <laughs> that it's, and apparently a friend of mine goes, you picked so well, you picked incredibly well when you chose Pandora because Pandora's ability was to drive men mad. And I'm like, oh, yeah, and that really fits Alice perfectly, right? So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um... And like that sort of chaos, uh, that's, you know, one of my little like catchphrases on my uh, Twitch channel um, is, you know, I'm always like, y'all, my life is chaos. Everything is chaos. Um, just because like when I'm playing some of the games, like crazy stuff will all of a sudden start happening. And, um, you know, it's just very indicative to how, you know, my life, you know, IRL in real life is like too, is that, you know, I'm just do it to do, you know, minding my own business, doing my own thing. And then all of a sudden chaos. And it's like, what, excuse me, who invited you to the party? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you, you know what, what, well, here's the, here's the thing, right? You, you know, deep down inside that there's like, I think the most important thing for most of us is actually, this is the other thing you can learn from Alice. This is the other really good thing about her. She never fully lets the chaos inside her. Yes. It's around her. But it's never actually in her, right? And, and yeah. as, a, as a result, she can kind of navigate her way through. And I feel that's actually a very good lesson in life. Like, I wake up every day and I don't know what's going to happen. And you know what? It's probably a good thing because I'm not, I, I should not be given that much power to have that kind of control. I'm <laughs> not mature enough. I just, I know this about myself. It's like, I don't need that kind of power because I don't know what I'm doing. And that is probably for the best that I don't have it. But what I can do and what I've learned about is, is I, war, I, I especially in this time, I have learned very much, it's really about controlling your controllables, whatever those are. They don't have to be very big things. The important thing is just to let yourself, how did I get here? Why I did this, 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 and this. So I'm going to keep doing this, 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 and this because I likes it, and 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 I know what I'm doing here. The world can figure itself out, right? <laughs> right? I, I, I I don't need to I don't need to actively participate in the world going. You know what? I know what I'm doing, right? Right? I have the solution to the problems. Like, yeah, I I, I do too. But but let's just I'll I'll be nicer to each other. But but until we get to that wonderful point, I just like you do your thing like do what you're supposed to do and worry about what you can control 
and don't let the storm that is around you, right, get inside you because you don't have to. And I think that's one of the coolest things, that, especially in this time I've learned. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, you're actually talking to Captain Control Freak over here. So, yeah, oh, that God. is. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Um, yes, I, I actually, um, I suffer from clinical, um, obsessive compulsive disorder. So my life is literally all about like, what are all of the variables that I can control? And then the ones that I can't control are the ones that I basically obsess over that. I'm just like, I must find a way to control these variables because I must control everything. <laughs> so yeah. That, that, that's, too hard. That, that, that's too much like work. I don't want to do it. I'll tell you what, when you figure this out, let me know. <laughs> Because I, I I don't want to, but I will happily take the shortcut of covering cup copying. Okay? <laughs> it, it, because it, it, it's no like I've been in situations in my life where I have had very little control, and then you, you know, and, and it, when you are, I know this is a and when you have a tendency to want to control, that's a hard. This is a hard thing to accept. There's very little you honestly have control over no matter where you are. And that's a hard pill to swallow if you yeah. are control <laughs> This is a hard one. But if you can swallow it, if you can honestly swallow it a little, right? A little bit, it's like, you know what? I don't need to worry about how many times I sneeze in the day. That That's not, that, I mean, there are people that are that much of a control freak, right? I don't need to worry about where the rain's gonna fall. I'm not gonna worry about that. But what I, here's what I'm gonna worry about. I'm gonna worry about what kind of ice cream I want to eat tonight, because I can control that. <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can worry about the story I'm writing. Like, in fact, I'm really done my next book. Like, I can, I can focus on that and do that. I can worry about the fact that I am talking to the mysterious Alice, the author. <laughs> I have control over that. Because, well, and to, and to a point, I mean, you, you're a willing participant. If you had said no, I'd have been screwed. I would have had to find someone else, right? <laughs> but I accept the fact that all, all I can do, like, I have like eight rules of success, and the fourth rule is literally the rest is rain. Right, this right. Basically, the rain's gonna fall where it damn well pleases. I can get really mad about the rain falling, or I can be like, okay, so if I want to get water from the rain, I'm gonna put the buckets in these positions and hope the <laughs> rain falls here. And I'm gonna worry about that. And if it doesn't fall here, okay, I'm, I might have to, you know, punk somebody and steal the water. I don't know. But I mean, it's just one of those <laughs> things where it's like, there's just so much I don't, I'm not in control over. And I found that when I just became much more okay with it, I just became a lot more chill, if that makes sense. It's just like, you know what? You do you. I, I'm not, I'm not, here to <laughs> right? I'm not here to fix this. I'm just, you do you. Good luck. God bless. And, and that's, and that's it. And then, and then, and then you know what, if you want my help, I'm more than happy to help you. If, if, right. I don't want you to hurt yourself, but I'm also like, you know what? I gotta, I, I believe in you enough as a person that you have your own agency, your own choices, that you have your own wits and your goals and your dreams, and all that stuff, that you're gonna do what you wanna do and then I'm, and I'm gonna have enough faith and hope that it's gonna work out for you, right? That, that's it, and, 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 I, and, I, and that's sort of truly what's with everybody. Now, it may make me very magnanimous or, or maybe it doesn't make me so magnanimous, it's lazy, I don't know, you can make that decision <laughs> on that, but, I, I just, I just, I learned a long time ago, like, you're the only Alice, right? There's only one of you. I'm going to have faith and trust that you know what you're doing about you, right? We might disagree on little things, but that's okay. I'll still have a beer. You, uh, wait, I should ask, do you drink beer, like drink beer or coffee, tea? What's your drink of choice? Uh, my drink of choice actually is rum. Okay, so rum. Yeah. You can have rum. I'll have like a vodka. We'll sit there, we'll <laughs> chill. We can disagree about everything under the sun. But the fact is, you're still going to be a cool person when it's over. Oh, I don't need. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't need to completely agree with you to to completely agree with you to to get along with you, right? You see the world in your own way, and I trust you enough as a person that you're going to find your own way. And if you need help, tell her. I mean, I, I, maybe that sounds really simple, but that's, that's, I mean, maybe I got old and wise. We don't, I don't know, but it's just like, but that's where I got you. Like, I'm just, I speak like this for you because someone like you is that, like, again, we're all creators and creators. We're all to some degree, we're little maniacs. We really, really are, right? Right, where it sounds, because again, we, we, we tell a story and we, 
and we kind of are in control of the carrot. And sometimes my characters boss me around. I'm good with that. I, I've learned. I've learned <laughs> a little of that. But I mean, but the point, but the point I'm I, I'm I'm getting at is we are used to dictating in our art. We, we convey a message and we do it all the time, and we're used to having that voice and that agency. And in especially in our own worlds, that's why sometimes it's really tempting to get stuck in our own worlds, right? And that's the temptation we suffer from. But the truth of the matter is, in the real world, we're just one voice among many. But I. But as I've gotten older, like, you know what? That's probably a good thing. So. I, I feel you on that. I, I definitely agree that being in an echo chamber is not a good thing, that we all need conflict in order to grow as people. Mm -hmm. um, my, my Captain Control Freakness uh, really applies mostly to, like, how I comport myself and how I like live my personal life and all that is really where that comes in. And sometimes that clashes with people and other times it, you know, ends up actually helping other people that like, you know, I bring into my life and stuff. Um, but a lot of it has to do with, you know, just my really intense need to create things. And in order to do that, I have to live by like, it's equal parts regimented and equal parts chaotic <laughs> lifestyle mm -hmm. um, because, you know, again, like I mentioned, like my life is filled with chaos and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, but it's also super heavily regimented. Like when people look at my to-do list and people look at my schedule and stuff, they get really freaked out. They're like, how do you live? This is making me so uncomfortable and nervous. Just looking at this, I don't know how you live this every day. And I'm like, Makes me feel comfortable. It makes me feel better. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, you know, you don't, you don't get to, you know, it's, you need to have some sort of regiment in order to write as many things and draw and paint and perform and model and just do all the things that I've done in my life. I wouldn't have been able to do if I didn't have all this like regimented stuff in my life in order to accomplish that. But then every once in a while, the chaos comes along and just takes my life and yeets it across the room. And then I have to figure shit out all over again. <laughs> so <laughs> so, it, 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 so I'm gonna give you a big compliment then. Cause, it, cause I, I, I kind of get where you're coming. I, I kind of get, especially the, the regiment part, like, look, I've been producing a show five days a week now for about four, four months. I still write, I still, and, and I've been doing day job stuff off and on for that last little bit. Like I'm, I'm, I did a year of freelancing. I'm really proud of it. I did a lot of cool things. I got to go back at a day job in the short term, but in the long term, I know I'm going to be right back to the freelancing thing again. I'm still pitching stuff all the time, which is always cool. Um, you know, but there's a discipline to it. Like it's a mindset, like it's a legitimate mindset that I'm going to create for a living. Right. It's a lot different mm -hmm. than I'm going to create for fun or I'm going to do this for fun or that. But right. You take you, you have to take yourself to a degree of seriousness and you have to be your own boss and you have to move forward and you have to be driven to, you know, do things. And you're, you're madly passionate about it, but you also are smart to go, you know what, I, I need discipline, at least a little bit of discipline to get anything done, because if I don't. Right. I'm going to just keep falling farther and farther and farther behind. And that's going to piss you off more. And then the worst thing that happens in that situation is you freeze because now you're like, I'm so behind. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Or yeah. Happens, right? It yes. happens, right? It does. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. But, but at the flip side, at the flip side though, is, I mean, sometimes it, it goes, it, it happens anyway, even with the best of plans, but that's not really the yep. point. The point, the point is, I am doing something today to go progress myself forward, whatever that is. It doesn't matter if I get it. Look, you and I both know. How do you make God laugh? Tell me plants. Just, 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 just do that. Like, how do you make God laugh? Right? It doesn't, it doesn't, it never works out the way you imagine it's going to work out. It's very ever, true. <laughs> ever. That's not the point. You make these plans. You make this list. You do this, right? Yeah, it's accomplishing when you you achieve those things, but it's your roadmap to do things, and that's as important as actually doing them. I have a I can take this giant list of stuff I'm doing, and I'm compartmentalizing the smaller steps, and each step I take is one step closer to my success, right? 
And guys, if you look at her website, when we plug her at the end, she's got a 13 book EIA series that, that, uh, uh, on her website that she's talking about. It's just like, you know, um, she's working on it and yep. she's been doing it for a long time. That kind of dedication and planning, you don't do that on a whim, not 13 <laughs> bucks. You just don't. So yeah, you need that. Like I, I actually, I completely understand where you're at on that because no one takes you serious. Like, like, you know, this as well. It's like, I'm, I write for a living that that's nice. Then you, show yep. books. then you show books and then you show everything else you're doing. You're like, holy shit, you're a writer. I know. <laughs> shocking, isn't it? Right, right. But, but, but it's because a lot of people talk, talk the talk. Yes. You walk it. And that's a big difference. It is. It is. And, um, that's a big problem that I've found in a lot of um, the online communities um, because I have a very strong local community. And unfortunately, my access to it has been limited because of the pandemic, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, so I've been, you know, also looking online to be able to, you know, connect with, you know, more people and grow that community and stuff. And that's really what you come across is that, you know, for every real writer, you know, real person who's actually working on their work, whether they're published yet or not, there's at least a hundred, if not a thousand people who are like, I'm a writer. And I'm like, sure, yeah. honey. <laughs> okay, sure. You keep uh, telling uh, yourself that. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's actually, no, this is what you say. You say, I believe you. I'm not sure anybody else would, but I <laughs> I'm not going to fight you. Because I know that sounds a little like like obnoxious, but here here's the thing, right? I, I've learned, I've actually, I, and again, as I've gotten older, I, I see this. It's like you can tell who's serious by what they do. Yes. Every single time, right? Now mm -hmm. you can tell that sometimes people aren't ready. That's different. Like when you see, yeah, someone that's not totally ready, different. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see it. It's like they're trying. You respect it. They're just not quite there yet, and you yeah. know it. Give them some time, a little bit more seasoning. They'll figure their shit out. They'll be awesome, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing. But then you'll see this one. You'll see these people. Oh, I did. I do this, 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 and you're just looking at them. And you're like, okay. Since since I've been here, I've done this, 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 and this. And you'd be right. The same thing. Since I've been here, I've done this, 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 and this. <laughs> since you've been here, I've seen you do nothing but sit on your ass. Now. It's possible you got it well in the bag. You got it more together than me because Lord knows I got my problems. But, <laughs> but based on what I'm seeing, I can kind of make a conclusion that this isn't your priority. One of the things that I, I've, I've um, was one of the things is we all choose what we prioritize. Yes. And as a creative, if you're going to prioritize making doing creative things for a living, well, then you have to go kind of on a schedule. And you kind of come kind of set set some goals for the day, and you gotta you know take your crack at them every single day. Um, the hard part for someone like you is when you don't achieve your goals for the day, because you probably beat yourself up probably a little harder than oh, you should. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Captain Control Freak over here is unhappy when the to do list is not completely checked off by the end of the day. That is not a good day. <laughs> I give for you sure. a hug and say, "There, there, <laughs> my cry." But, I mean, oh, but sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, I'm just bringing this up just because like this, because it's like, I never question, like someone like you, I wouldn't question the effort. If that, like, 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 and um, I'm going to ask a really dumb question. And if you don't, sure. don't do me, how old are you? I turn 33 tomorrow. Nice. Tomorrow's my birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. Thank so you. Everybody, wish, wish Alice a happy birthday. Happy birthday. If I sing, if I sing, if I sing, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but, okay, so, yeah, so I'm 39, right? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm older slash, well, well, we'll, we'll pretend I'm wiser or something. <laughs> I, I care, like, when there's a deadline and there's money involved, I care. But if there's not... I don't beat myself up quite as hard anymore because I realize, like the map, the, you know, this too shit sometimes goes down like chaos. That wonderful little bit is a chaos happening <laughs> in your life. Yep. yep. Right. 
So again, did you make an effort? Yes. Did you do everything you knew how to do? Yes. Did it work out? No. That's life. Right? That that that's legitimate. <laughs> right? right? Now a deadline is a little bit hard. I get a little bit like I like you, I get like a little little choked when I don't make a deadline. If I don't make a deadline for some reason, I, I get a little choked about that because that's money. And yeah. I I don't want to get into that habit. That's a bad thing. Right? Right. But if it's not an immediately pressing issue, did I do something about it today? Yes. <laughs> did it sound like I wanted to? Hell no. Was it my <laughs> fault? That, then, then, then I asked that question. Was it my fault? Yes or no? If the answer is no, I shrug. If the answer is yes, I was a lazy asshole. <laughs> okay, then I have a problem. If it, yeah, it's no, just things came up that you couldn't control. Okay. That's not, like, like, like that, that may, may, I don't know if you've gotten to that like Zen state yet. But you will. <laughs> you will if you haven't yet. Right. It's um so it's the larger thing of it um because I I do once in a while um get asked about this you know why exactly do I ride myself so hard why exactly am I so determined to you know create so many things because on my I call it my master to do list so I have like my immediate to do list and then I have my master to do list which is the to do list until the end of time to do list. <laughs> and that one really terrifies people when they see it because um, I actually have 60 different uh, books at different levels of completion right now. Okay. And um, the big reason behind all of that is actually because um, when I was, you know, little and I went through so many deaths at such a young age, um, I have a really severe phobia of death. And I have a lot of issues associated with that. And one of the biggest ones is I see that giant hourglass, the hourglass of life. I see it kicking. And I'm like, I know I only have so much time to do the whole list. And that's where that comes from is every day is another day closer to the end. Another day that we have not completed the things. And that's where that comes from. And that, and, and, and I know it's like one of the most horrible <laughs> sense to be motivated to do literally anything but there you go <laughs> so see i'm probably so i might i'm gonna ask this question and depending on your answer i will tell the story if the answer it right because i am probably the one guy that might terrify you the most <laughs> or or not and so the question is this how much do you believe in the thing like like for lack of a better term, the supernatural. Oh, this is a fun question. Yes, it is. It is. Because <laughs> if you how you answer this, I will tell my story. If you answer you don't, you you you're not, you don't want me to tell oh, oh and by the way, I should just mention this right away. If you tell me you don't want me to go farther in the story, I'll stop. Because it sounds okay. like this sounds like this is it deals directly with your fear with through my own little lens of experience. And this is a warning up front. This is why I'm asking. Do you believe in this? All right. What do you believe in terms of that? Um, so this is how I always preface it so that, you know, I don't get hauled off to the loony bin. Mm -hmm. I only believe in the things that I believe because of the things that I personally have experienced myself, as well as the things that people that I know very well and trust have experienced. Um, I absolutely 100% believe that there is some sort of otherness structure out there, however you want to frame it, as the afterlife or as another dimension or as the whole idea of you know time and space and energy and all that. However you frame it, I feel like they're all kind of the same mm -hmm. in a way. Um, you know, all currently unprovable um, within our current scientific measuring um you know by any like in you know definite proving but um the things that i have experienced i see them as 100 percent truth because i experienced them and the things that i've been able to present to people i'm like there is no other explanation for these things that i have experienced and the fact that i have experienced many of these things in front of other people 
which, you know, it's like there, you know, there's nothing up my sleeve. There are no tricks at play here. So I don't know how else you want to explain this away. But um, yeah, one of my big things with modeling uh, was uh, I used to go on these massive adventures with my best friend, Brian Thompson. Um, he's my chief photographer. Um, we would go to these amazing haunted places like the Ohio State Reformatory. And in addition to taking amazing pictures for dozens of magazines and stuff, we would also go on our little you know, ghost hunting adventures there. And I befriended, um, the uh, professional exorcist that works at OSR, his name is Scott. He took a very big shine to me because he's like, I see through the fakers. And he's like, you're something special. And uh, as I tell people, my hair is so long because it is full of secrets. And I actually know confidential information about OSR that I am not at liberty to discuss with any persons other than Brian and Scott. So there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the first sentence, and then we're gonna see if you want to hear the story or not. Okie doke. I met the shadow of death once. Would you like to hear how how I met it? Sure. Yeah. So I was living in Sholo, Arizona, and I had been spending the last few months literally losing everything. And I mean, absolutely everything. I goes getting my ass handed to me. And one day, I'm, I'm, I was working at Walmart at night. I was like, prior to coming and moving in Sholo, I was like hitchhiking to work for an extended period of time from the other city I was living in. It was 20, 30 miles. I would, I would walk on average eight to 10 and 10 miles. I was in school, I was working and I was slowly killing myself, like really slowly, slowly killing myself. And one day I'm on my way home. I'm, I'm at, there's, there's a 7-Eleven at the edge of town. I lived, I lived by it. And um, it was the second last night. So also I see this shadow in the distance and I didn't know how or why I knew it, but it was coming for me. It was far away still, right? But it was coming for me. And the most interesting thing I noticed in that time, like, like for me, the most interesting thing about that experience was it was my choice. Like I could have, I, it was my choice whether to walk forward, forward towards it or to go back away from it again. And it really just, hit me in that moment one day I'm going to die right it just hit me really really hard that that is a thing this I was 26 27 years old so like I like young to experience something like that and and then I and then I had another really wonderful but also kind of terrifying thought too it was I'm supposed to die someday and it's not entirely a bad thing if I do and that's a really interesting like moment of realization and clarity. Um, one day I'm going to die, and when when it happens, it's going to be the it's going to be right. It's not going to be a terrible thing when that day comes. But so now, so like much like you, death has touched me as well. Not quite the same way, but in a very so I can understand the hour blast. Like I only have so much time. But I would also venture the argument. There's another reason you have such a big long list, right? I don't know if this. It, maybe you thought of it this way, right? Life is short on time, but it's super long on possibility. And you're the kind okay. of per, and you're and you're the kind of person I think, because just how just again just just something about just something I picked up about on. <laughs> if I'm wrong, by the way, call me on it. Maybe I'm full of shit. <laughs> um. You enjoyed the discovery. It's one of the reasons I why do. you are an artist and you're create and you're creative. And I think the reason why Alice in Wonderland inspires you as much as it does is there's a very, very subtle magic to it. There's a journey of discovery and both look through the looking glass and Alice in Wonderland. And when we create, we do the same thing. And somewhere along the way, when you realize that you only have so much time in this life, in this place, you come to this realization the life itself is that wonderland journey of discovery and possibility. And much like me, I get the impression you're the kind of person that like it looks for that magic everywhere. So that's why you want to do as <laughs> many things as you possibly can, because for you, right, you realize that you only have so much time to enjoy this and you want to see as much and do as much as you can. 
and, and, and am I am I right wrong I'm that is a hundred percent accurate that is that is a big reason why I have crafted my identity and my lifestyle to be what it is is because far too many times I've been challenged by people who have told me you know why don't you just grow up why can't you just be normal you know why do you have to live like this why do you need to be like this and I'm like because life is short and I'm not going to spend my life pretending to be somebody I'm not. I'm not going to spend my life pretending to be something I'm not. And I don't see the purpose in spending my life doing things that don't serve me. And, you know, I've, I've never subscribed to the culture of, you know, I wake up, I go to work, I come home, I don't do anything and I go to bed and repeat. I don't understand that lifestyle. To me, that's just, that's not living. That's existing. You know, that's you're sleepwalking through your life. I am a firm believer in that. It's like, you know, you have to do what the things that you feel called to do in life, the things that you enjoy doing, the things that excite you, you have to go looking for that stuff. And if you don't, then I don't really know what exactly you're doing with life because, um, not to like get super religious or anything. It's just a parable mm -hmm. story example. Okay. Um, but one thing that really, really struck me as a young kid was um, I grew up Catholic. And so, you know, so every Sunday was we go to church or else, you know, bad things yeah, were happening. Yeah, yeah. So I spent a lot, a lot of time being born in church. Um, but <laughs> there was one day where I don't know what caused me to decide to pay attention. You know, I don't know what caused seven year old me to pay attention that day. But um, the story was the one story where the father, gives his three sons their inheritance. And the first one goes out and just parties his ass off and wastes all the money. The second one is scared to spend it and he buries it in the ground. And the third son um, reinvests it in the family farm and, you know, helps make it even more successful and, you know, all that stuff. And even though this wasn't really the point of the parable that, you know, they were talking about in church that day, I personally took it as, you know, that's the idea of you're given certain gifts in life, whether they're talents, whether they're life experiences, whether they're opportunities or, you know, whatever have you, you're given these gifts and you can either waste them, you can hide from them, or you can actually use them to their fullest. And I'm personally of the belief that, you know, I'm going to do my damnedest to live my gifts to the fullest. You know, I was given these talents for cre these creative pursuits. And I've been given some really amazing opportunities in my life and I seized every single one of them and I'm still working to make the most of all of those things that I've been given because I don't believe in, you know, I'm just going to go and get some, you know, beige job and live in a beige house with my <laughs> beige life and, and, you know, hide from all my talents and hide from all the gifts that have been given for me. I'm not going to do that. But at the same time, I'm also not going to go on the other end of the, you know, extreme perspective and live the YOLO life of fuck everything. Tomorrow doesn't exist. And, you know, just completely go off the deep end either, because I feel like that's just as bad because you can't properly utilize what's been given to you if, you know, you're passed out half the time, blacked out half the time, don't even know what's going on, you know? Like, it's, the, you have to have a balance. So, so when I'm 80 years old, I'm jumping out of a plane. See, I, I say <laughs> 80, 80, 80 years old, see, this is, how, this is my whole, whole take on this, right? I'm gonna need a nap afterwards, <laughs> right? On uh, everything I do, possibly a new pair of underwear, we'll see how much bladder control I have at 80 years old <laughs> entirely. Well, you know, it's one of those things that surprises in life as you get older. You're like, oh, though some of these things don't work like they used to. Meh. But at 80 years old, I just think I won't give a shit. Like, I, like, I, like you'll be like, you know what? I'm going to jump on this trampoline right now. I might need to sleep for three days. <laughs> right? I don't care. Because, I, I, because again, your time is precious. Um, but, I no, I totally get what you're saying. Like, I, I have this, I have the, like, I just, I've always had this tendency just to, um, just do it. Like, if you feel really that compelled to do something, just do it. Because honestly, the worst that can happen is somebody will say no. And guess what? We're both creatives. We're in the rejection business. We're getting <laughs> a lot of those no. Right? No. Yeah. Like, like, I, like, okay, so the crazy, so this year I've been a freelancer. I've done a lot of, 
I've done a lot of crazy like things. Like I've applied to be a podcaster for Disney. I've applied to be like a podcaster for Spotify, Warner Brothers, HBO, because I thought, you know what? I got all this wonderful experience. I mean, as you can tell, I have an incredibly big mouth and I'm really, really good at what I'm using, <laughs> right? I, right? I'm good at it. So like, why not? I mean, the worst they can tell me is no. I got a whole right? pile of no's. Fuck it. I don't care. It's, it's, it's not I'm exactly where I was when I started, right? So now it's just like I can keep going. Um, the only thing, the only, the only um, caution I would give to someone like you, because you have sixty zillion things on the go, is this would be the question I would ask someone like you: What's the most important thing you're doing right now? Ah. Yeah. And see, that's the thing, because I'm Captain Control Freak. I have a priority list, and it's uh, not. <laughs> so I can't answer that. So, so I, it's like, I have a plan. Yes, I have a plan. <laughs> I always have a plan. <laughs> yeah, so you always have a plan. That's right. You always have a plan, right? And, but that, we're not, and that's not a bad thing. As long, like, that's the real challenge. If you have a zillion things on the go. What I have found what I have found as a creative and what, and it took me about six months to learn this as a freelancer. I think when you start, it's mm -hmm. always hard because you're just like, okay, what's going to stick on the wall? What's the beginning yep. going to stay there? <laughs> and then what you realize after a certain point is the spaghetti that's going to stay there is not that different from the guy from the, from in my case, the guy that's throwing the spaghetti is probably going to be the stuff that actually just like, I have a big mouth and I talk to people. You know, it makes sense. If I go somewhere, I can make that make money doing that. So hence, hence how why I ended up on Twitch, and kind of <laughs> how I stumbled onto you. Actually, I saw like it's one of those things, right? But uh, before we get into your Twitch channel, why, why, and why you're building these these block these odes to Minecraft, and why you why you <laughs> Minecraft as as your game of choice. What was this, like? When did you find the creativity for writing? And like, what came first, writing or drawing? And like, how did you find it? Um. So basically, um, I am a legacy writer. Um, my mom is a writer, and I also have other women in my family who, um, like you know, in the past, like you know, great great grandma, you know, did boom 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 down the line sort of thing who were also writers. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's honestly, it's in my blood. And so the fact that I started making up little stories when I was three years old, my parents were thrilled. You know, they were like, ah, the torch has been passed. Wonderful. <laughs> you know? So I was a hundred percent encouraged and given every resource. Um, my dad actually uh, worked for Arthur Anderson. So um, for those of y'all that aren't familiar, it was that whole Enron, Arthur Anderson, the dot-com bubble, that whole thing. He worked for that company. And so he was one of the very few people who was very lucky to actually have a personal computer at home, like in the 80s. And so I grew up always having access to like technology and computers and stuff. And so by the time that I was like about, you know, six or seven years old, I actually had my own computer. My dad would just basically give me his old work computers. And so I like 24 seven had access to my own personal computer that I could just sit tap, tap, tap all day long on. And that was actually how my parents would brown me. I wasn't allowed to work on my writing. I wasn't allowed to work on my drawings and stuff. That's how they would punish me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the writing definitely came first. And I, it's not something I ever discovered. It's not something that I ever like realized. It's just so intrinsically part of me as a person that it's like breathing. I just do it. Like, you know, it's just that strong of a thing for me. And art was something that kind of came a little bit later, still when I was a child, but it was because as a little kid, I actually read a lot of um, like old, like British stories. Um, so like those books that have like the uh, woodcut, like um, block prints sort of thing. Oh, cool. And so little kid me thought that all books had pictures in them. I thought that was a thing again, you know, Alice Wonderlands, you know, what good is a book with no pictures in it? Yeah. Um, and I so I, but anyways. <laughs> yeah. And so I thought that, you know, in order to write books, you also had to make the pictures to go with the books. So I started like making my own little books where I like, you know, would have these pieces of paper and I'd write little things and I would draw little things and I'd staple them together. And, 
So like they just kind of evolved side by side, but it was also very obvious that like my writing skills were like up here and my art skills were like down here. And over the years I've been able to like improve as an artist, but like my writing is just like through the ceiling. Like I've never needed like help with that. Like, in fact, when I went to college, my teachers were like, we don't really know what to do with you. So why don't you just go sit in the corner and write quietly <laughs> while we teach other people how to do shit? Cause we don't know what to do with you. <laughs> Um, whereas my art, like that's purely because of just practicing and practicing in classes and lessons and just drilling it over the years. But my writing has just, it's just something I do. It's just something that happens. Like it's, I, I don't know how to not do it is okay. really kind of how it is. See, I, I, I theory you did art because when they grounded you from the computer, you decided to draw pictures in protest. So that was actually my theory in my head. So I was like, you're not going to stop me from telling stories. I'll do pictures instead. <laughs> oh, no. They also took away all my art supplies, my coloring books when I get grounded. It's just all of the above. It's very sad. I, I, somehow, I somehow see you as a bit of a, like, a, I, I, I do see this, like, prior to it. You were probably very quiet, but I also, I also, I get the hunch. You just did what you wanted to do by and large yes. and they let, and they let you because they did, yes. they, they, they knew stopping you was kind of pointless. So, yes, yeah. I, I've always been that child that it's yeah. like, you know, well, we're not going to waste our breath. So go be a giant weirdo, go off into the world and be weird. Okay. <laughs> go off and be yourself and don't worry about it <laughs> because no one's going to care tomorrow how weird you were today. And it's true. Most people don't. It is. Yeah. It's just, did, did you have fun? That's all that really matters, right? So. Yep. Um. So you, you, you're, you're, then again, you definitely have the experience. You're probably a way better writer than I am. But I do know this, like for me, um, there's, there's, there's three stages to like, I think being a great writer versus the craft, right? Hey, first we copy from the people we really, really like. Like I said, for you, it was the wooden box. It's like yeah, mm. you're right. For me, it's comics, right? For me, it was comics. Mm. And, and, um, but then there's a point where you start telling your own stories, and and, and here's the thing, right? There's this like, we get really in our heads. We really like just go, this is gonna be great and wonderful, and 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 the best we can do when it's just here is good. We can do good. Yeah. But we, but, but we can't do great. Not and not here. <laughs> not here. We can do good, but we can't we can't do great because. I learned this. I learned this. I can't do a stick figure like a five-year-old can. They're sticking. <laughs> this sounds really silly, but it's I think one of the most important lessons I think as an artist you can learn. The five-year-old that does the stick figures, like technically speaking, we can do a stick figure drawing like a five-year-old, but we can't put the intent in it. They can. And truthfully, where we cross the gap between good and great is when we put intent in our work, that emotional connection in that resonance which means we have to get out of our head and we have to be honest with what's in our heart. So in your case, when did that happen? Because my guess is it probably happened after you rebuilt yourself. Um, so yeah, definitely the different stages of it were that it was very obvious very early on that I had a very strong natural talent for writing stories and storytelling and stuff like that. And so of course my mom jumped on that and she bought like, you know, Strunk in White and all that stuff and gave me all those kinds of like grammar and structure books and made me read them. Like I was reading that stuff at age like 11 and you know, stuff like that. And she was merciless with her red pen, you know? So it was, you know, she really helped me with, you know, taking storytelling and giving it structure. Like that was more so like what I needed help with was like, the technical parts of being a writer. And she was the first one on that path that really helped me with that. And by the time that I got into college and stuff, like, you know, my professors couldn't really help me in terms of this is how you write a story. This is how you like be a writer and stuff. The teachers that helped me the most were the ones that were able to be like, this is how you operate as a business person, as an author. Like, this is how you take your books and you actually make money with them. Like, this is how you approach publishers. This is how you approach literary agents. This is how you go out and network at conventions. And then, of course, also them getting out the red pen and being ruthless and them teaching me there are better ways to be able to write your story. It's kind of like the idea of work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. They taught me 
the formulas to be able to write faster and write better, you know? So just, you know, it's basically like, you know, just completely like, you know, polishing and cutting the diamond is, you know, really what that was. And as far as like discovering like the heart and the intent behind my stories, I feel like there's different layers of that because I write a lot of different things. I write a lot of different genres and I write um, novels and short stories and poetry. Um, and I feel like there's different levels to the intent behind those different things. Um, you know, of course, fantasy has always been my, my biggest, my greatest, my first love, love, love that. And a big part of that was born out of just me as a child having an incredible imagination, but also um, after, you know, during that time that I was being bullied, it was my escape. And I read every single fantasy book in the school library. And once there were no more, I was upset because I was like, there's no more books to read. I need more books to read. And thankfully, you know, I, I did not want for books because my parents also bought me and, you know, a completely obscene amount of books as well. But that was my first realization that there are not infinite books to read, infinite books to escape into. And I started realizing that I need to be able to write the books that are not on the shelf yet. And so that's always been a really big motivator for me is that, you know, I know how much it helped me to have a place to escape to in stories. And I know there are a lot of other people that are in that same position and I want to be able to write those magical escapes for those people. So that's a really big intent in my stories. Okay. So th the reason I brought all that up, all, all that up, like I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I, I came to the conclusion that no matter what kind of story I write, it isn't it, there, there's always going to be a little bit of me in that story of, of what, I, uh, what I care about. Of course. So when, I wrote, when I wrote about The Watcher, uh, like my, my first book that I accidentally wrote and got published by accident, too, is going to be weird. <laughs> How does one accidentally publish? <laughs> so, okay, so here's what happened. So, <clears throat> after my time in Arizona, and I, I, I rebuilt myself, I, after about a year of, of, of coming to, uh, having my little come to Jesus moment, say, hey, I am going to not live forever. I want to get back into it. So, I want to do a longer poem. So, I just thought about this like like top like this tower and this boy was looking out into the horizon looking what's out there in this compound where his family was being were being slaved and slaved to dragons where they were they were doing whatever and he was that was his job and i wrote that first chapter that was the first that was the only intent i had i wrote it i liked it it's like this is pretty good i like this <laughs> what happens next so uh, chapter two he kills his dragon master and escapes into the woods oh i can't leave it there I gotta know what happens next so I did the first night alone that's really cool like like that was probably still some of my favorite writing I've ever done because it, it's not only the fact that he's alone for the first time he just killed something too and, and just making like like coming to peace with all of this and just not having a clear answer where to go from there is like I feel like such a very human thing okay yeah. that, that that's not a happy ending that's not cool what happens next <laughs> so, so I wrote chapter four, and when I led to chapter five, but chapter six, I realized, you know what? This is my poetry collection. This is my poetry story, and and and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. So I, I write the whole thing out. I got I have an kind of ending, and then I like um, I hired an illustrator. And my master plan, I, honest to God, was I'm gonna publish this on Smashwords. I'm gonna like make copies to sell at, at like conventions and shows, and 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 that's it. So someone buys it. And goes to, uh, on Smashwords. He goes, I like this. What are you going to do with this? So I, I just told you, basically, right? Yeah. He goes, well, I just signed a deal with Ingram Spark. I'm sorry, you're going to publishing house. So I'll publish it. That's how you accidentally. That's how you accidentally. Wow. That's how you accidentally write a story. <laughs> and get it published. That is how. That is how. Nice. That is write. wild. That yeah. is so wild. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've had a. I've had a crazy like like. Me and you in a different converse in a different conversation. I, I'll tell you, like I've had a crazy. I've chased my dreams my whole life, and it's been a crazy ride. I have, <laughs> right? It, 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 and the ups and through all the ups and the downs, I don't regret a single thing. Um, if anything, I have become fearless almost to a 
fault. I just, I don't, <laughs> it, it sounds like really bad, but like I, I'm very much, a lot of things that scare most people do not scare me because I just, I know that like, I, I, again, my own experiences with my own mortality have taught me how fragile life is. I know I'm going to go at some point. And again, it's not entirely, I'm not going to say this is entirely a wise way of being, but it is who I am. I don't let my fears stop me from going for I just go for I just do. Like I've learned in this life that you, we only have, it's, I'm going to make a million mistakes in this life, but I'll be damned if I have regrets. And that's on, and that's honestly the thing. I, I'm, I'm cool. Like I'll have a million mistakes, right? We go. I don't know what you believe in terms of, of the athlete, but say, like, listen, God's gonna say you are a fuck up here, 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 and I'm gonna say <laughs> guilty. That's <laughs> not like I'm not even. I'm not even gonna defend myself. That I don't. I truly think that doesn't matter as much as people think it does. I, 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 I truly do. Like maybe I'm wrong about this, but. Honest to God, we, we, we're in this life to make mistakes. The real question is, do we have the courage and not just to go for it? And then again, I've learned this lesson over and over and over and over again in this life. Just put yourself out there. That's it. Like, it's not, it's not about how good you are. It's not about how talented. Like, it's awesome you're talented. It's awesome you have all these skills. But you know this probably even more than I. It's the fact that you put yourself out there that is what makes it truly special, right? That's what people notice. They don't care how good it is. Yeah. Right? They really don't. They just care about what it makes them feel. And they care, and they care about like, oh my God, he's putting this effort out. Oh my God. Well, like, he's crazy. But I <laughs> like it. Right? And, that, and that's the right, right? And, and I imagine it's the same with you. It's like, Oh my God, she's this awesome little weirdo, but you know what? She's just going for it. <laughs> and I dig that, right? Yeah, it's it's very much like I said with the, you know, the three sons. It's don't be the one that buries his gold in the ground and hides from it. It's you can have all the gold, you can have all the talent in the world. And if you don't do anything with it, it's meaningless. You know, you may as well not have it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And you know, that's why whenever, you know, people see me and they see the things that I'm doing and every once in a while, there are all those, there are those people that are like, I could do it better. And I'm like, okay, go ahead, do it better. I would love to see you do it better. Like not even in a sarcastic condescending way. It's, you no, know, it's like, if you really think it. you can do it better, do it. You know, yeah. it's the problem is a lot of people don't try to do it in the first place is really where people fall short. It's they, you know, they see, oh, here's the end goal. It's way, way, way up here. And then that's all they see. And they give up immediately instead of seeing, well, the goalpost may be way, way, way up here, but you know, there's this step and this step and this step and this step in between. And that's how yeah. you get there. Yeah. And they don't even try for that first step in the first place. And that's, that's how you go for it. Well, yeah, you, you, you can't, like, well, and hell, go, hell, try to leap to the tallest point right now. If you can get a shortcut, kudos to you, right? Right, yeah. Right, right, right. It, it's, like, I don't, I'm not jealous of anyone's success. I know how hard it is. Like, look, you've written, what, two dozen books, right? 29. Okay, so, so almost three dozen books. I got some kids. <laughs> I'm a five, okay? Don't hold it next to me. I got to catch up. I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> but um, I, I bring this. I, I bring this up because, like, I learned this lesson, and it's it's the, it's the simplest. If you guys get nothing else from our conversation, get this, right? The only difference between Alice, honestly, and don't get me wrong, she's talented, amazing, badass, all, Renaissance woman, all that other one fun stuff, and this is all true. <laughs> But she became it because she went for it. She didn't let anybody True. tell her no. She didn't, she didn't let anyone tell her no. She wasn't afraid to get her ass kicked. And sometimes she did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes. Y'all do. It's, it, it, it's healthy. It builds character or some bullshit like oh, that. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, sometimes. So sometimes, again. But as I said earlier, sometimes we ask ourselves, why did we have to be that way? But anyways, that's another, that's another conversation for another day. The point is, um, 
and, and this has been a tangent to answer the question way back when. We'll get back to that in a minute. It's just <laughs> I've learned I've learned the most important the most important thing you can do in this life, no matter what your goals are, is just go for it. Put yourself out there. The worst anyone's going to tell you is no. And to be honest, in, in my case, in, in analysis case, the ones telling you no are idiots for the most part. It's all true. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. Because honestly, you're going to get a yes sooner or later. And even if you fail, you still might succeed. Life is gloriously yes. unfair. <laughs> gloriously unfair. <laughs> It's true. And that's uh, that's actually one of the stories that um, my teacher told us that re really resonated with me. I don't know about my classmates, but they told us the story about Stephen King. He got so many rejections on his first book that he originally put a nail on the wall. And every time he got a rejection letter, he put another letter on that nail. And he got so many that it fell off the wall and he had to go out and get a railroad spike. And he put that in the wall and started putting the rejection letters on it because he got so many before he even got his first book published. And that, you know, those no's aren't necessarily, you know, about you. A lot of them are about circumstance that it's, you know, it's not the right publishing house. It's not the right genre. It's not the right editor. It's not the right day. You know, the wind is the wrong, you know, not the right direction, you know, whatever have you. It's, you have to keep, at it you have to put yourself out there you know until you find that yes Just, you know being afraid of the no is is not going to help you do anything know, you know, know you're going to get a lot of no's and you have to learn to deal with it and, it's just part of life and you also can't be afraid of the yeses either yes take yeah. those yeses yeah because those yeses are going to come with expectations but you know what that's what she wanted Yep. All right. That's what that's that's the price. So, so rule four is the rest is rain. We talked about the path to getting the yeses. Rule yeah. five. So my big mouth won me the Aurora wrote this podcast. And I realized when I had that moment in time, I asked myself this question. And this sounds like really dumb. It's like, how did I get here? But I think it was one of the most level headed things I ever did because it's like, okay, you have an ego, right? And it's a really bad idea to stroke it publicly. No one likes that. So, <laughs> sounds really funny, but it's actually it's actually true. It, like no, like your ego is one of the most. It can be. It's great in the sense in the negotiating table. You should probably bring that ego to the forefront a little bit. But in every other circumstances, it it will get in the way more often than not. Right. So. You got to have it like that little like meeting with yourself. It's like, okay, how did I get here? Why am I successful? Right. And what happened? Like what happened? And try to be as honest with yourself about what your strengths and your weakness, and more importantly, what are your weaknesses? <laughs> try to avoid your weaknesses as much as you can. Or work on them if you have no choice but to deal with them. Try to turn them into some form of strength. And and finally, just like, okay, so if I do more of the thing, these things that got me here, I'll succeed. If I, if I do these things, which are fuck-ups, they might work in my favor sometimes. But this is stuff maybe I need to work on. And above all else, though, avoid this because now there's expectations. People know you can accomplish great things. They're going to expect to some degree those great things. And you can't beat yourself over the head with your own great things either. Right? You, each thing you do is going to be wonderful in its own right. You may not hit the same levels of success, and there is going to be pressure to try to match or surpass those 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 barriers as well, especially when there's money involved. Like there's definitely there's definitely a um a struggle there. But at the same at the same time, like you realize this too, like it's there's a bit of a lottery to it. I mean, there's just, there's always going to be a bit of a lottery to it. All you can do is do the, figure out the things that you do well that got you to the dance floor and just try to keep doing them to the best of your abilities. Cause once you do that, like you can get out of your way. It's like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna, this sounds really stupid, but actually I find this is probably the best advice I've ever, I've ever had, I've ever given myself is we all have an ego. 
it's good that we have one a little bit right but never ever ever stroke it in public avoid that at all costs because that's ultimately will undo you it's true, and I 100% I agree with that, that it's good to be confident in your abilities, but once you go overboard and turn that confidence into, you know, snobbery and pride, that's when people will start to pull away because it's it's a very ugly thing, you know, and it, it also usually involves putting others down as mm -hmm. well. And doing that sort of thing does really doesn't win you any friends, or if it does, it's really the wrong kind of friends that are, you know, you're not going to want to have. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, it, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a line that you have to walk because I've met a lot of people who are very talented and, you know, who are hard workers, but they don't have that confidence to put themselves out there to, you know, go from, I do all this stuff on my own, you know, on my own behind closed doors and they're scared to, you know, bring it out into the world. But at the same time, there's also the people, you know, the ones that I earlier mentioned that I'm like, oh, that's nice, sweetie. Okay. Pat on <laughs> you know, the ones that are all talk, you know, they talk a big game, but they don't have any game to back it up with. And it's like, I see nothing here. I see nothing but your empty words. Like, I, 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 I <laughs> hear your words and I see nothing else. Right. No, nice. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 you I, have to find that balance. Yeah. You, you, well, again, it, we, we all have to be like, I think, I think like, like there is, there is a value in staying a little humble too, just a little bit. Like, like, look, I, I know, and this is a shock to me sometimes. And I know this is like, like my shit stinks. I need sometimes <laughs> all these documents, <laughs> but you gotta keep that in mind. Like, you, like you, 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 your struggles to be the best artist you can be. I find to some degree, of your struggles to be the person you want to be too. And at the end of the day, you can only do the best you can. But I've also, like, I think the ultimate, the other way to keep your ego kind of in check is also just the fact that you know what, you can always get better. It doesn't matter who you exactly. are. Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. and that's and that's a big thing that I like to showcase with um, my Twitch channel originally started with um, I was just doing my drawings live. So I was doing like my digital illustrations live and talking to people while I was doing it. And in addition to like telling stories about my life and stuff like that, I would also like talk about my process and the things that I had learned about my art and stuff like that. Um, but a big part of it was also um me talking about me challenging myself as an artist so um recently i did um a digital painting titled depression on my live stream and that whole painting was a huge challenge for me that i wanted to somehow do a watercolor style painting in a digital format and i was like you know this is not going to be perfect, y'all. Like, this is going to be a process. And we're just going to be excited about whatever it is we come up with because I'm challenging myself as an artist right now. It's, you know, I don't know how to do this watercolor technique digitally. I don't know how to translate that. Like, I can do watercolor on a canvas. I know how to do that very well. Now let's see how, how do I translate this to digital? And so that was like a fun adventure for me and my followers to do together is, you know, watch me figure out how to make that work. And we had a lot of fun and, you know, the end result, it was not perfect. You know, I, I, I'm sure like if I actually did it in physical watercolor, it would look a million times better, but that wasn't the point. It was, you know, to learn and to grow. And I'm always doing that with every aspect of my crafts, you know, whether it be writing or art or, you know, performing or, you know, whatever it's, I'm always striving, you know, how can I be better? What new techniques can I learn? What new ideas can I try out? It's, you know, no matter how good I am or how good I've been in the past, I can always improve. I can always be better. I can always learn new things. I can always try new things out. And I feel like the true failure, the true downfall of being a creative person are people that rest on their laurels where they get to a certain point of greatness and they're like, here I shall sit, here I shall stay. And they, they just plateau and they just, that's just where they are. And it's like, you know, I guess in a certain respect, that's, you know, fine. You know, you can find success in that, but you don't grow anymore. And, and, you know, that's, 
that's kind of a waste of your talent if you decide to plateau. Well, okay, let, 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 let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate slightly with this one. Because sometimes it's not really about resting on your laurels. It's sometimes it's about the paycheck, too. Like, put, put it to you this way, okay? Let's say your 13 book series kicks all kinds of ass. Mm -hmm. But you're, but you've told your story and you're like, I don't know if I have another story in there. And the publisher went to you, we'll give you seven figures for it. Hmm. <laughs> I might be able to find a story for seven figures in it. And, 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 right. And, and I think I think this is an honest like this this is the business end of it as well, right? You will establish yourself the more and more you do this as this kind of writer or this kind of yeah. author or this kind of streamer. And you can definitely change your formula. But the more lucrative you are in your current state of mind, the harder that is to make that transformation. Now, it's is it wiser to keep experimenting? I'll agree with you there, but I would I would just say just strictly from the devil's advocate point of view, right? Strictly on a business level, let, let, like I said, your young adult series, you do thirteen books, they're all towering bestsellers, and you're rocking and you're rolling. They say we want more books in this world. You're like, but I've told my story, but here's a paycheck. Guess what? You, I mean, you're gonna be like, <laughs> you're gonna be like this, awkward. I, I don't know if you're here, <laughs> right? Is, is that fair? Is that fair to say? No, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. And I, I am actually also a very shrewd businesswoman. I am all about that marketing game because my like day job in freelance land is I also work as a social media manager. So I completely understand all about that marketing aspect. And yeah, I mean... A hundred percent. Like if you have like a smash hit thing and your audience wants more of the same, it would be stupid not to deliver more of the same. And the thing of it is, is I actually have been capitalizing that in that I um, have, you know, I started a couple of years ago writing romance novels because I know that that's an audience that's very much we like more of the same. And so more of the same I shall give you, you know. But at the same time, I'm the kind of person where I'm like, but why not both? Yes. It's like, sure, I shall serve you more of the same with, you know, wonderful romance novels that give you the feels and make you happy. But then I'm also going to be over here and I'm going to write a full, you know, Japanese novel. And then oh, I'm going to be over here and write, a, you know, a, a novel about French vampires. And oh, we're going to go over here to Magic Land and write 13 books about, you know, all kinds of other nonsense. Like, I am, I am absolutely that, you know. But why not both? So, 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 <laughs> I, mean, I, I just thought I should bring that up to your attention. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Because I think that's a fair point. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, right. And, and it's something like, and any, and honestly, this isn't just true for writing or an art. This is anyone that's successful in anything. The honest truth of the matter is, there's always that tendency to kind of pigeonhole you in a space. And you know what? Look, if at the end of my career I'm like the Dr. Seuss. Of, of comics, <laughs> I would be very happy in that space. I hopefully will be known to do other things, mind you, like you're saying. But it's like you like like if you if you if you ended up like being like, okay, Rawlings kind of a, a bad name right now, but it's really hard. Yeah. We'll say we'll say Susan, <laughs> we'll say Susan Collins. We'll say Susan, cause that's that's a respectable name. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You're the, All right. You're the, you're the next Suzanne Collins. And, and YA, and they want you to keep writing that kind of book forever, and people love what you do. Would you be okay with that? Like, no, no yeah, I'm business. I, like, I would, yeah, I, I, but I would still do, but why not both? Oh, sure, sure, I would sure. still deliver. I would still deliver, be like, here's your book, here you go, I did the thing. But I also did this over here because I felt like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, am, like, I would one hundred percent do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying. Like, I, I, I have, I've come to terms with the fact that people are going to put me in whatever boxes they want. Yes. Right, and I'm yes. okay with this. You know, as long as I get paid. If that is, I mean, yeah. that, that may, yeah, that that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That may make me sound a little bit like a whore. But I mean, it just what. <laughs> Let's be real. Let's be real. All us freelance creative folks are just a horror of another kind. Like yeah, it, it's yeah, it, yeah. it's the nature of business. But 
it's it's funny though you mentioned doing other things so so i'm a lincoln park guy so this is the album's called a thousand sons it's it's their concept album it's their concept album about nuclear fallout it's not their best album but to be perfectly honest with you it's not their best album however there is something to be said and this is something we're, we're like you're mentioning here to emphasize your point more the fact is the more things you do the more skilled you are at the things you're really good at because it's like you're learning more more language or more words it's like i could do this with these words now right <laughs> yeah this sounds like a really simplistic way of looking at it but honest to god it's the truth i started drawing four months ago and 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 it has definitely changed how i write because it's how i see things in a different light than i did prior to that right and mm-hmm. right I mean, I can draw let the link with obnoxious boots now. It's fantastic, <laughs> right? I did a Lego Ultimate Warrior. I, I have to admit, boobs still kind of defeat me a little bit. Right? They, they they do defeat me a little bit because they did the t- shadows and 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 I I had I had to figure that still figuring that out. Like I'm not good yet, but I'm having fun, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. I'm mean, right, and, and and that's and that's the important thing. Like the the. But because I'm doing all this stuff, when I go back to writing or go back to doing other things, I can see them with fresh eyes, right? Because I, because I, I agree with you. I couldn't imagine like hell would truly be. You're gonna write the same thing <laughs> forever. <laughs> I'm not about that life. No, thank no. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, this wouldn't be coffee. This would be like. Like this would this wouldn't even be rum. This would be something like absinthe. Like oh god, <laughs> yeah, we're here. straight up rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but I mean that's but that's where we're at. However, um, I'm going to turn the line on real quick. I'll be right back. But I did have a question. So we haven't gotten to your. We've talked a little bit about your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let let let's talk more about your channel before we wrap yeah. this up because I think I think you do cool. You're cool. So, so here's the thing, okay? So here, here's the thing I, I, so strictly, okay, we'll strictly talk the business end of this first. I'm new to Twitch. Like a lot newer to Twitch, like I, I finally get in like an audience and I'm growing and all that other wonderful fun stuff, but I'm still relatively new to Twitch. But one of the things that's like, that seemed really smart for me, get involved in other communities. You know, and I accidentally, I, I'm not quite sure, I don't recall exactly how I, oh, I know how I discovered you. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter's how I discovered you. Oh, really? Yes. Because. I love that. Yeah, Twitter is how I discovered you because I was looking for, to meet, get into different communities of, and, and, and I remember that I followed you on Twitter and you followed me back. I think I made you laugh or something. I, I could say based on the number of times I've made you laugh. Yeah, I think I remember that you like, I think you like replied to like a tweet that I had said and I, I thought what you said was funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think we had a little bit of a conversation there. I think I remember that. Yeah. yeah and, and then, and then I found you on Twitch. I found you on Twitch and you're building like, Minecraft. You're playing Minecraft on Twitch is how I found you. So yeah, I think one of the things is like this is streamer week. Now I realize Alice does not consider herself a streamer, to which I call a little bit bullshit. However, <laughs> right? However, I, like, I I consider myself where it's like I'm very new at this. Like yeah. I wouldn't consider myself like woo. I'm super important on Twitch, y'all. Like I'm so famous and I know what I'm doing. Like so, <laughs> I'm new at this, <laughs> and that's. Fair, so am I. But I, I, I'm going to go by like so. I'm now. I'm going to go by something Isaac Gazmov said about writers. It doesn't matter where you are in the journey, whether you're publishing a book or you're writing a journal entry. You're a writer. The only real question is whether you're making money doing it, right? Yeah. Well, you, you just crossed that threshold not too long ago. So yes. <laughs> so, so Alice is now an affiliate on Twitch. Pretty fabulous. So, that's right. <laughs> it's awesome, and congratulations. Thank you. I wanted to, and, and again, I have streamers of various different levels throughout this week. Like you guys starting Our Day Gamers, it, who's become a bigger <laughs> channel with this indie stuff. I got uh, 
Anthony is awesome, who I actually don't know anything about. It's going to be a fun, like, just <laughs> walk, walk, walk. He's really cool. And then I have, um, I have Mr. Gatsu, who's another Minecraft, um, another Minecraft streamer. On the weekend, I'm going to be playing Minecraft for like the first time ever. I'm kind of nervous. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I hope you have a blast. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, Le I'm a Lego fan. I think Lego's like the coolest. I love toy. Legos. Yes. I love it's Legos. It's the in the universe. It really, really is. If you like, the only thing that kind of comes cl like close, and I'm not like, like it's it's a distant. It's like a slinky, right? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, but I think the biggest miscon like, and the biggest thing uh, I I watching streamers like yourself and other people. I think the biggest misconception about streaming, um, I don't think it, there's a lot of parallels to art with streaming. And I think I think it's one of the most interesting things about about it that I've I've watched because there's a discipline to it. Even if you're not good at a game, right? It's nice when yeah. you're good at a game. It is. Yeah, right, right. I die a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I die a lot. It's part of it's die. part of my flavor. Watch me die eight million times. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she's not the only person I know that uses the awkward cast race, but I have seen her awkwardly die on her stream a few times. It's actually been pretty yeah, funny to watch. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> However, and I think this is why I wanted to have streamers on this. One, it's a, it's a community I feel that I think a lot of writers can benefit from. Right, I feel you have is you've been one of the ones that have benefited a lot there, and we'll talk about that. But I also kind of wanted to bring about in this perspective too. It's probably to some degree shaped your freelancing career because a lot of the same stuff you do in streaming, you do in freelancing, you do in run, you write your books. It's it's almost it's amazing to me how fundamentally work of any kind seems to follow the same base skills. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. You're very much preaching to the choir here um, as a professional marketing person that as I tell my clients and my social media um, work, I don't have to be an expert in whatever it is you do or your company does or whatever, because at the end of the day, marketing it is the, is fundamentally the same. You know, the, the steps I'm going to take it doesn't matter if you're selling pizza, if you're selling makeup, if you're selling art, it's going to be the same. It works the same. And, you know, I feel working as a creative person, working as a freelancer, you know, the fundamentals, it's the same. You have to wear a lot of hats. You have to learn a lot of skills, you know, it's, and on top of it, it often looks from the outside. It looks a lot easier to do than it actually is. A lot of people don't realize a lot of the behind the scenes work that goes into any of those fields. And, being a streamer on Twitch is very much like that, that I am rapidly having to learn a lot of stuff behind the scenes in order to, you know, get my channel to, you know, like overnight, basically, you know, be as professional as possible because I've grown so, so fast because I started streaming in November and, you know, I became affiliate in mid-March. And just the, at the rate that it's snowballed has been so completely crazy because it's been exponential. It's, you know, it was a bit of a slow grind, like November, uh, December, January, but it really ramped up when I started playing video games in December because people actually came, you know, actually messaged me and requested I play video games. They're like, we love watching you draw, but we want to watch you play video games because it's, one of the things I do just in my spare time, it's like my for fun thing that I do. And I'm like, okay, sure. And then, you know, people started to be like, we want to watch you stream more. And I'm like, okay. So I added more nights to my schedule that I dedicated to streaming, you know, just basically give the people what they want. And then it really went wild when um, a big thing I do while I'm like working during the day is I have like cartoons or, you know, whatever in the background. And I got really into watching these uh, YouTubers playing Minecraft. And I was just kind of like, that looks like fun. I want to play that game. And I literally downloaded Minecraft. I can't remember. It was either at the end of February or the beginning of March. And I started live streaming me play it. And people just went bananas over it. And now I have an official night where it's like, this is Minecraft night. You know, like, the people have spoken. They want to watch me play Minecraft. So play Minecraft, I shall. <laughs> 
and you know it's just been a crazy journey and then just hitting affiliate so quickly it's you know it's just been like i barely had time to catch my breath that it's like you know okay i hit affiliate and then it's like your lighting needs to be better okay i invested in these lights oh you know what it would be better if your background was less distracting okay i got a green screen I'm like texting my brother who's a big time streamer and I'm like, how do I do this? How do I light a green screen? Help me. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. it's, it's just like one thing after another. It's crazy. <laughs> so I have a green screen nightmare story for you. Oh no. <laughs> so way back when I was in Arizona, I was about to go through my really hard time. I was in school. So mm -hmm. we, we decided to do DVD interviews of all of us prior to you because it was a magazine course and the guy would edit it and do it. Well, he, he ditched it. Do you know how terrifying it is when you have to make the decision just to leave the green screen alone, not actually touch it? Because no matter how, there there were situations where we put the green screen up, people were cut in half. There's another oh. situation. Oh yeah, because it was because it was never in the same spot, right? You know as well as I do, you gotta <laughs> keep it relatively the same. You gotta keep it relatively the same setup. Yeah. My my, my personal favorite was green curtains at night. When the car dry cars are pulling out, you know what's like. Oh no! Oh yes! Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you know you know, you know as well as I do. Oh no! There's nothing you can do about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you look at that. It's like, well, what, what do you do? You, you, I mean, do you want this to look haunted? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this isn't the theme we're going for here. And when we showed it, it's like, it can't be that bad. We showed them. Oh my God. It's like, <laughs> how do you think? Oh, it? yes. Yes, it can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, do you feel better now? Like, have you ever, like, I, I did not set the green screen up that way. I, I, I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> right. But it was, I looked at that. I was oh. like, precision goes a long way. It really, really does. And I, <laughs> I learned that lesson because I tried editing video in green screens. It's like, hey, you don't know what you're doing with Adobe Premiere Pro. I, ta I taught myself with Adobe Premiere Pro. I was like, yeah, I can put a green screen on it. I can change this. And then like, the person completely disappeared from the screen. <laughs> Why is that? It's like, is it my end? No, 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 it's not my end. <laughs> It really isn't. It's their end. Because the green screen went to here. And the person oh. who went past that point. Yes, I'm going to see. Like, like, so, so there you go. Some horror stories. Yes. Some oh, horror. my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you probably feel a lot better about your, your, your screw up now. <laughs> oh. No, I actually, um, last week I had my first troll, um, you know, and he came in and he's like, wow, your setup's really unprofessional. You're such an amateur. And I was like, actually, sweetie, you're kind of correct in saying that because I have no idea what I'm doing. I just made affiliate a couple weeks ago. I just bought this green screen the other day. I have no idea what I'm doing. So yes, you are correct. And you can't make me feel bad because I'm learning. <laughs> I know nothing and I'm still <laughs> great about it. Right? It's like I actually just say I know nothing and it's the whole of my secret. It seems to work out quite well. All right. Oh. It's almost like I know how to interview or something. I don't know. Anyway, say that's not it. <laughs> um but uh, so you're mark so you do marketing in the day, like so now this is what I've learned on my own, and this, uh, let's let let's see if I actually would know what I'm doing as a marketer. <laughs> but, okay. You're the you're the expert. I'm just a schlub with the podcast. So just just okay. So I realized something very important about sales, and it's this. It sounds very counterintuitive. It's not really about the money. It's about the relationships you establish with your customers. That is the start and end of it. And if I were to hire you to do it, what I'm basically saying is, I don't know how to talk to people. Can you help me? Is that, is, is that, is that about right? 
It is. It is 100 percent. And that's what, you know, I have to impress on a lot of my clients, especially clients that are like, you know, of the older generation and stuff. They still live by that hard and fast, like shark tank car salesman attitude. And I'm like, you got to slow your roll. People don't want to be, you know, sales at, you know, that's counterintuitive. You're going to drive people away like people want to you know, know that you're a real human being. And they want to know the story behind you and why you're making the things that you're making, whatever it may be. And yeah, that's the biggest thing that I always drive with my social media stuff is I'm like, you know, I need you to tell me about, you know, why are you selling this product? What is your reason for it? What made you decide that you wanted to do this? And, you know, what's the story behind it? People find that far more interesting and are far more likely to buy your shit because you have a great story, because you have a great reason behind it than well, you know, I have the best pizza. Nobody gives a shit, you know, but, oh, you know, I went to Italy and I, you know, met this family and they made this pizza and it inspired me and I wanted to recreate that and bring it here to the States. People will fall all over that. They love that kind of stuff. Like, that's what people want. They want to establish that kind of like, you know, this is why I want to purchase this thing or this is why I want to have this service is they want to have some sort of special connection there because, you know, we live in the era of infinite choice. You go to the grocery store, there's an entire aisle of cereal. There's hundreds of cereals. Why should I buy this cereal? You know, is, is kind of the, the idea behind it. It's we have infinite choices of literally everything. So why should I care about your thing as opposed to somebody else who does it or makes the same thing? You know, you have to differentiate yourself. You have to create a story behind it. You have to show yourself as a human being. People aren't into the whole black cloud corporation crap anymore. They want people. They want humans. They want that connection. Yes. Yes, indeed. So you're saying I do okay then? I I, I understand the basics. It's not that you do. Yeah. 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 It's not that different than trying to date a girl. You, you got to figure out how to talk to them first. It's just like once you figure that basic step out, you have to talk. <laughs> We're people. Yes, I <laughs> We are people. Stop with the formulas and pickup lines. They don't work. Just be a person. Right. No, no, Just be a person. Uh, uh, be, be a person, yes. But it, listen, if, if the lame pickup line is you, go with it. They'll pick up the... That's the cheesy humor, though. Yeah. That's not a formula. That's being yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I had a buddy, like, I, I was talking I was talking to... to, to and he listened to me talk, and I, I would just be my lame ass ass. Like, why did that work? It'd be like, I'm not trying like they have, women have a natural bullshit meter. Yes, they, they have a natural bullshit meter. Now, to some degree, they don't mind a little bit of bullshit. If it makes them look feel like if they're trying to, if you're trying to make them feel good, they don't mind a little bit of that. But there's a point where like, OK, so is there anything real about you? Right. No, no, there's nothing real about you. Well, you're kind of worthless. <laughs> <laughs> Because that, that's that's pretty much it, right? Like, you, yeah. You, I mean, you, you guys have a great, and, and like I said, it's true with sales. Any kind of relationship you want to build, most important thing, and, and this is ultimately, I think there's a good spot that I think they wrap to show up for now. Because I get the like, you, you do have to stream tonight if I'm not mistaken, right? At some <laughs> point. Yes. And, and, and don't and and but don't get me wrong, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you because honest, honest to God, you. You're awesome like you really really are oh, i think thank you i've had yeah. so much fun yeah <laughs> but i figure we should we probably the way we should wrap this up is the final point of this is whether you're streaming whether you're writing whether you're illustrating i do have one last question but we'll get to that after or you're streaming you're writing you're illustrating whether you're marketing whether you're doing this you've got to find your authentic self and you got to tell yes. that story to your audience whatever that is a hundred percent. I agree. A hundred percent. That is the key to literally doing anything. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's creative, technical, whatever. You have to be your true self. You have to find your true way of doing that thing in order to be successful. So I'm going to, I'm going to start and end like how I started with you. This is the last question. Then we get to the wonderful plugging. All right. Life. I'm ready. <laughs> so we got big, we got big little glimpses of who you are tonight yeah so i'm gonna ask it to put it to some to, to quote unquote sum you up who are you alice who am i 
Uh, that is a question that I frequently have to answer because I get asked it when I get all of the confused looks that you do this, 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 there's a list. Mm -hmm. I say that I am a magical unicorn and nobody can tell me what to do. In a nutshell, that is who I am. Okay. I, well, um, my novel has a unicorn that actually sparks rainbows and talks with the rainbows. And just like, you think? You think? Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I, I like. His, oh dear. <laughs> his name is Roy G. Biv. Oh my. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've talked out of the book or talked you into the book of that. Right, but, but like you no, know, he literally talks out of his ass. It was one of the funniest things I've ever did because he actually was a built-in spam bot that actually does yeah. random advertisements. But he's oh, also, funny! Yeah, his spam will survive the apocalypse. You and I both know it. It's like the cockroach of digital. Right? It's true. It's right? true. Artificial it's like a South Park episode with the ads. Yeah, <laughs> artificial intelligence will come and go. Spam is forever. Spam is forever. It's true. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, so when this is all this crazy stuff is over and we're doing conventions and stuff like that, I sincerely hope I get the opportunity to actually meet you in person. Cause I get, that would the be feeling, amazing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah I, I get, the, I get the feeling we would have a lot of fun hanging out. I, I really do. Get I that think feeling. so. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, what, you got a lot to promote here so i'm gonna give this over to you i think you should start with your streaming because i is it is streamer week yeah absolutely <laughs> but if there's like a book that's out if there's something you want people to pay attention to like this is the spot man go for it all right so for all y'all that you know haven't tuned in yet my Twitch stream handle is K H R Arts A R T S. Again, it stands for Catherine Howard Rose, Henry the one of Henry the Eighth's wives. My favorite one. That's a whole other story for another time. But that is how you find me on Twitch. Tuesdays are my Minecraft day. Thursdays are General Video Games Day, and Saturdays are my Drawing Day. I do try to get on later at night to have my little Minecraft hangout with y'all. But again, that always depends on me getting my work done for the day as well as how tired I am. Because you know what? Self-care is important, y'all. You need to sleep and you need to eat food, especially during the pandemic. Take care of yourself. And you can find me on all of the social medias under littlealice06. I also have a separate Instagram just for my KHR Arts stuff. Um, but you can basically find like all of the things with the stuff on my little Alice handles. I am also an author and an artist. I talk about it a ton on my live stream about all my work with that. And I currently have five novels, seven poetry collections, and 17 art books out in the world available for purchase. The easiest way to go about finding those is they are all available on Amazon. You can find the full catalog on my website, Alice the Author. That is where you can find the full catalog if you, you know, need the whole list. I also frequently promote all of them on my social media. So all you have to do is give a little scroll, scroll. You'll be able to find those fabulous links. But I'll real quick go through with y'all. We got Love of the Sea, Mermaids, Tearing Down the Wall, Romance Novel, Geisha Hands, Wonderful, fully illustrated Japanese historical fiction novel, partially in Japanese, Freya's Baby, romance novel, Freya's Baby Shattered, alternate storyline to Freya's Baby. And then we have all seven of my poetry collection. I don't have the seventh one, it's on its way in the mail, but they are the Synesthesia series because I have synesthesia. So we got seven of those and I can't hold them all up because I don't have enough hands, but just pretend I have 17 books here. I have all of my art books and what they do is they combine my poetry, short stories and artwork with Brian's photography in order to make a full visual narrative. So basically amazing stuff 
like this. Just super fabulousness. All created. I still have a giant list of things I'm working on. I'm currently waiting to hear back from a publisher about my French vampires novel, Succumb to Darkness. It is partially in French. It's basically the 18th century French Revolution, but with vampires. Super cool. And then I also am currently finishing up my novella, The Seashell to be submitted to Uncanny Magazine, so fingers crossed on that. I also created an illustration to go with it. And um, obviously, because it's you know the pandemic, I haven't been able to have any of my artwork featured in local galleries, but that is a big thing that I'm planning on doing once the pandemic is over, is getting all my stuff out there again. But I am currently taking commissions, so if you need something drawn, feel free to shoot me an email and we can work that out. As of right now, my commissions list is very, very full, so it's a bit of a wait list. So if you're, you know, willing to wait, I got you. But if you're not willing to wait, you know, you might want to, you know, hang on to that for a while until my commission load is a little bit lighter. Um, but yeah, all the details can be found on my social media. As we said, I have a very long list of all the things with the stuff. I'm constantly working on stuff. I try to be really good about putting up updates about this is what I'm working on, this is what's going on, because it's a lot, y'all, and I can't do it all in all just one plug. So there you go. Be sure to follow me so you can get all the deets. So as you can see, and she wondered why I chose her and for streamer. <laughs> I'm not a streamer. She is awesome, though. This is Alice, the author. She's awesome. <laughs> And this is the end of the first episode of Stream Week. Tomorrow, our day gamer joins me. We're going to talk about indie games. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is Streamer Week, ladies and gentlemen. So you're going to get a little bit more about the Twitch community this week. If you guys want to support my podcast, you can hit the follow button on my Twitch stream. I have the followers for affiliate, but we're going to get, we're going to get, we're going to keep hopefully growing the community so more and more people can watch the shows. It's going to be amazing people like Alice and more. Um, I'm on YouTube as Josh Pentelaresco. My books are available on Amazon. You can listen to my podcast on practically anywhere you'd like. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. It's been real. Take care. <laughs>